Like many of you, I have been coming to Gatlinburg my entire life. I grew up just a short drive from here, and the Smokies are a part of my DNA. I was only three years old when my father died, but my earliest memories of family vacations were here in the Smokies, especially Gatlinburg. During my elementary and middle school years, my mom brought me here what seemed like almost every weekend. But if you've been to this area lately, you know this area has changed, and it's changed a lot. It's not the quiet mountain hamlet from the 1980s. Yes, it's still beautiful. It's still a wonderful place to vacation with the family. But with every new building constructed here, it seems the history of this place is very quickly being lost. So today I thought I would take you around town for a quick little trip down memory lane. The last name, Ogle, is one that you will see and hear everywhere you go in the Great Smoky Mountains. Back in 1802, South Carolina farmer William Ogle came across the mountains and found this area that was known then as White Oak Flats. He decided this lush valley at the foot of the Smokies was the perfect place to relocate his family. Local Cherokee helped him clear a site for a new log cabin. Ogle went back to South Carolina to pack up his family, but before he could return here, he contracted malaria and died in 1803. A few years later, Ogle's wife and his children came here. They found the logs that he had cut and decided to put the cabin together. They were the first European settlers in what is today Gatlinburg, and this is the cabin. This piece of history has been moved many times over the years. It once sat across from Mountain Mall, where parts of the Anakista development are today. Fortunately, this important part of Gatlinburg has managed to survive, and you can find it outside the Welcome Center at traffic light number three. It stands as the oldest preserved log cabin in the Great Smoky Mountains area. What you see behind me is the most revered hotel in all of Gatlinburg. The historic Gatlinburg Inn was constructed in 1937 and most people will tell you it is the single most significant piece of property in this entire town. That's because of its ties to a very important song in these parts. One day back in 1967, the songwriting duo of Bootlow and Felice Bryant checked into room number 388 here at the end. These are the they were working on a slow tempo album for the late great Archie Campbell, who grew up not far from here in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. The Bryants were tossing around ideas when Felice said the album needed an upbeat song. 
Budlow is said to have responded, wish that I was on old Rocky Top down in the Tennessee Hills. The creative juices got flowing and that's what sparked the song every Tennessean knows by heart, Rocky Top. The Bryants knocked out the song in 15 minutes. The song took off when it was recorded by the Osborne Brothers, but it really came into its own in 1972. That's when it was first played at a University of Tennessee college football game. And watching a UT athletic event was never the same again. The Gatlinburg Inn is one of three hotels that operated during the resort town's early years of tourism. This building is Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. Perhaps you've been here before. But before this behemoth of a building was constructed, this property was home to one of the grandest hotels in the southeastern U.S. Hotel Greystone was constructed by Dick Whaley in 1941. With a spacious dining room that served southern style home cooking, it was designed to accommodate upscale visitors to the Smokies. A large veranda on the front overlooked an expansive green lawn that rolled down to the water. It was an imposing building, one that to a young kid looked like a large castle. People who live here and have been around long enough remember the old Greystone fondly. It's really sad it's no longer here. As you're walking down the parkway at traffic light number five, just in front of the aquarium, be sure to stop and take notice of this great informational sign directly in front of the aquarium. It has a lot of great information about the old gray stone. The Mountain View Hotel was first built in 1916 by Andy Huff to provide lodging for lumbermen. It originally only had 10 units with one bathroom on each floor. To meet skyrocketing demand, Huff eventually built the hotel you see here. It was Gatlinburg's first hotel. During its heyday, the hotel hosted a number of famous people, including First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who was a guest in the late 1930s. Huff furnished an entire suite of rooms for her stay with all new furniture. The mountain view could be seen from this corner of the parkway in Highway 321. It was located just up on that hillside. Looking up there today, the hotel is just a memory. closed in 1982 despite being put on the National Register of Historic Places. It was demolished in 1993 all for the sake of what some called progress. late 90s you would have found a small amusement park by the name of Fun Mountain here on the property. That business only lasted a few years. The property has been abandoned ever since.
just behind the Welcome Center, you'll find this sign with some really great information and old photos from the Mountain View days.